Okay, this video is about how to evaluate inverse trig functions. Okay, we graphed them yesterday. Let's talk about how to evaluate them today. All right, so this is just some reminders of what we talked about yesterday. So we're, here's your arc cosine. And it can be written like this or written like ARC cosine. Um, they mean the same thing. So domain is the input, remember? And that's what you can put in for x. So look at your x values. The x values can only be between negative 1 and positive 1. Okay, so they're not going to ask you for the inverse cosine of anything other than what's between negative 1 and 1. And if they do, then you're going to get an error. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now the range is perhaps the most important part because that's what you're going to be finding today is the range. And if you recall, look at the y-axis for arc cosine. It goes from 0 to pi. So when you draw your little circles, you're going to highlight the rainbow because this is the region that you're going to find your answer in for arc cosine. All right. And if the arc cosine they give you is positive, then you know it's over here in quadrant 1. If it's negative, then you know it's in quadrant 2. Okay, so know those range outputs and you're going to um, draw those circles with each one. Now with arc sine, okay, remember, what is, what is my possible x values? Well, look, it goes negative 1 to 1 as well, okay? Anything outside that range is going to be an error. But look at the y, look at the range here. It goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So when you draw your circle for arc sine, it can be quadrants 1 and 4 can come from there. So if, if arc sine's positive, you know it's up here in quadrant one. If arc sine's negative, it's down here in quadrant four. Arc tangent. Okay, look at the x values for this. Well, really, the x values can be anything, right? The domain is anything for this because it goes on forever and ever. Now, but there is a specific range. The values for the range can only come from negative pos pi over two and to positive pi over two. So again, you're limited to quadrants one and four. And remember, if it's arctangent positive, then you know it's quadrant one because the signs are the same. If arctangent negative, then you know it's from quadrant four. Now remember, also with quadrant four, we're giving the reflected names, not the actual names, the reflected names only. And I'll show you what I mean as we do some. All right, these are what we just talked about. For arc sine, we can only pick from quadrant one and quadrant four. Okay, arc cosine, we can only pick from quadrants one and quadrants two, and arctangent we can pick from quadrant one and quadrant four. So yes, I expect you to write, draw these little circles in each question. So you're narrowing down, basically you're narrowing your playing field, possible answers, okay? So arc cosine, all right, I know that that means I have to choose from quadrants one and two, okay? Arc cosine is positive, that means it comes from quadrant one. So what I'm doing now is looking at the angle, looking for the angle theta that has a cosine of positive square root of two over two, that lies in quadrant one. Well, here's a little sketch of unit circle that you have in your brain, right? Which of these angles has a cosine of square root of two over two? Well, there it is, at pi over four. That is my answer, okay? That's all I have to do. Arc sine of square root of three over two. Okay, first of all, decide what quadrants you're looking in. Arc sine comes from one or four, and if it's positive, that means it's coming from quadrant one. So I'm looking in quadrant one, and I'm looking for the angle that has a sine or a y value of square root of three over two. Well, which one is that? That is right here at pi over three. All right? Arc tangent of one. Okay, where do I look for arc tangent? I can look in quadrant one or quadrant four. It's positive, so I know it's in quadrant one. So what angle has a tangent of one? Now, here's a little trick to this, guys. Um, we know that cosine are your x's, right? Sines are your y's. What about tangent? All right, here's a little trick to this. <clears throat> Instead of having to recalculate tangent every single time, uh, there's a way to remember this. Okay, if it's a pi over 3 angle, and this works in all the other quadrants, you just watch your sines. If it's a pi over 3 angle, then the tangent is square root of 3. Okay, if it's a pi over 4 angle, then the tangent is 1. If it's a pi over 6 angle, the tangent is square root of 3 over 2. And the, I'm sorry, square root of 3 over 3. The way I remember that is because 3 plus 3 makes 6. I have to have two 3's to make the pi over 6 angles for my tangent. 1, 3 for the pi over 3. And then the pi over 4 is just the 1. Okay, so this, this little trick works for all the quadrants. Just watch the signs. Okay, 
So we're now looking at, okay, where's the tangent positive 1? Well, right there at pi over 4. And that's my answer. All right, let's try some more. All right, <clears throat> cosine of, arc cosine of negative 1. Okay, so think, here's my circle. Where can I pick arc cosines from? They can only come from quadrants 1 and 2. If it's negative, that means I'm over here in quadrant 2. All right, so I'm looking for the angle that has a cosine of negative 1. All right, think about it. Well, you have only quadrant one listed here, but if you flip it over, remember, what's the coordinate over here? Well, it's negative one, zero. Where is that angle? Well, that's at angle pi. Okay, angle pi works just fine. Arc tangent of negative one. All right, arc tangent can come from quadrants one and four. It's negative, so I know it's down here in quadrant four. So if I reflect this little guy right here, just reflect it down in quadrant 4. Remember the tangent's 1 at pi over 4. Tangent is square root of 3 at the pi over 3s. And it's the square root of 3 over 3 at the pi over 6s. Okay? But if I reflect that down, it be, the tangent's negative because we're in quadrant 4. And what angle would that be? Well, pi over 4 reflected down is just negative pi over 4. Okay? That's the way we use that name. Instead of saying 7 pi over 4, we reflect, give its reflected name of negative pi over 4. Arc sine. All right, what two quadrants can I look in? For arc sine, it's 1 and 4 again. It's negative, so I have to choose an angle down in quadrant 4. So I'm going to use a reflected name. Look at your sines, your y values. Where, which one has a negative 1 y value? Well, that would be down here at pi over 6, right? But if I reflect it down, then that would be negative pi over 6. All right? That's how you do evaluating, okay? Lots of, lots of problems to practice with today and ask if you have questions, okay?